Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the procedure for installing Home Assistant on the small form factor computer. So this is an AWOW AK34. And if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So I originally bought this computer to use for a network appliance, but things changed and I had it available. So this has a Celeron N3450 processor, it has six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD. And it's on the SATA interface. It's not an NVMe. So it's not super fast. Fast, but it's plenty fast for what we're doing here. So it's currently running Windows 10. To install Home Assistant, I'm going to wipe that out. Now there are multiple ways to install Home Assistant. This is the way I'm showing here. It doesn't mean it's the best. It doesn't mean it's the worst. You can also put it on a Raspberry Pi computer. You can virtualize it. You can do lots of different things, but this is how I want to do it. So to install this, we actually have to take the hard drive here and image it. So you could take the hard drive out and plug it into another computer and do it. I'm going to use a procedure where I take a thumb drive. I'm going to install Linux on this. We'll boot into Linux and then from Linux, we will download and install Home Assistant on the hard drive. So let's head to the computer and start the process. Okay, so we're at the Home Assistant website, and if we click on Getting Started and Installation, we can go down here and we'll go to Generic x86-64. I'll click on that. Now we're not actually going to do anything with this yet. I'm just giving you a reference to where we're working from. So this system uses UEFI, so we'll be using that. This talks about how to configure the BIOS on your hardware. So if you're not using the AWOW system, the procedure to do that may be different. So you want to make sure UEFI boot mode is enabled and disable secure boot and then save your BIOS out. So as I said earlier, to install this, we'll install Linux on a thumb drive. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Belena and I'll put links below to these sites. And I want to download Etcher and I'm on Windows 10. So I guess it doesn't matter here. I can go with the portable version would work. And that will download to my downloads folder. Then I'm going to go to Puppy Linux. So you can use different live distributions. This is one that's small, so it's the one I'm going to use. But if you have another live distro that you like to use, you can use it. So I'm going to download it. I'll scroll down here, and I'm going to use the Ubuntu Focal 64. I'll hit Main, and that will download. So that's 400 megabytes. So I'll go to my Downloads folder here. So I'm going to be installing this on a flash drive. This is a Samsung Bar 32 gigabyte model. I'll put a link below to this, but you can use similar flash drives. I tend to like name brand drives. I think they are more reliable, a little bit faster. Also, you definitely want to use a USB 3.0 drive. So I'll plug that into the USB port. I'll hit cancel here. I'll open up Etcher. Now I'm doing this on the machine I'm going to be installing it on, but you don't have to do that. So you could create this thumb drive on any system. Okay, so for some reason it took a while for Etcher to open. I want to say flash from file. So I'll go to downloads and I'm going to pick the faucet pup. I'll click that, I'll say open. I'll say select target and I'll choose that flash drive and I'll hit select and then I'll choose flash. So the reason we can't install Home Assistant on this hard drive directly is because you can't install over the system you're actually using. So it's asking for permission, I'll hit yes here. Okay, that finished. So now I can actually shut down the computer or restart it. Now it looks like I have an update and I really don't care. So I'm just going to hold down the power button until it shuts off. I really don't care if I corrupt Windows at this point. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the computer on. And as I'm turning it on, I'm going to press Dell on my keyboard to go into the BIOS. Okay, so here we're in the BIOS. So I'll go to boot. Boot mode is set to UEFI. I'll go to secure boot, is disabled, should be good. Now I'll say save and exit, although I didn't really change anything. And then when it reboots, I'm going to hit F7. Now I could go into boot here and change the boot drive order, but I'll just hit F7. Okay, so I have a boot screen here. It says select boot drive. I'll choose the Samsung flash drive 1100. There's a boot screen, so I'll hit enter. I'll hit enter again. Okay, we booted. I'm going to run the video wizard here real quick. Okay, so I just did a change of resolution. You don't need to do that. I just did it because I'm recording the screen. So I'll click the earth in the bottom. This will bring up the web browser. In the search, I'll type home assistant generic x86 image download. I'll go down here to GitHub. I'll click on releases. I'll scroll down. And I'm going to look for the HAOS underscore generic dash x86 dash 64 dash and whatever version is the latest. It's currently 10. So I'll click on this. It's asking me what I want to do. So I'll say save file. I'll save it in my downloads. So I'll close this now. I'll open up a terminal. I'll type CD space downloads. 
I'll type ls, we can see it here. I'll decompress it, so I'll type xz space dash d space, and I'll type hao, and I'll just hit tab and it will complete the rest of that. You could type the whole thing out, but that's faster. I'll hit enter here, so this will decompress this file. So I'll clear my screen here. I'll type fdisk space dash l. So here we have two drives. Let me make this bigger. We have dev sda is the internal drive. It's 120 gigabytes. And then we have the flash drive, which is 29 gigabytes. It's a 32 gig drive, so it's pretty close. So what we want to do is we want to copy the image we downloaded onto the internal hard drive. So I'll type cd space download. I think I needed to say downloads. Nope. There we go. Okay. So we have that file, I'll type dd space if equals ha, and I'll hit tab, it'll put the image name there, and we'll say of, so that's in file equals the image, then out file equals forward slash dev forward slash sda, and I'll type space, and I'll say bs, that's byte size equals one, capital M. And I think we're doing it. Okay, so this is currently copying the image to the internal hard drive. So this shouldn't take too long, that file wasn't, well, actually I didn't see what size the file was. Okay, so it looks like it was six gigabytes. Yes. Okay, so we should be good to go here. So I'll say exit here. I'll say shut down. The computer's now off. I'll pull out the flash drive. I'll press the power again, and it should boot into Home Assistant. Okay, so we're booted up. It has a Home Assistant URL, so I'm going to enter that in on a web browser. So I'm going to switch over to my Mac now to finish the configuration. Okay, so I'm at my web browser. I'll type the address in. You could also substitute homeassistant.local for the IP address shown on the terminal. And in my instance, I'm actually going to do that because I had another one of these up as I was testing this. So here it says preparing Home Assistant. This can take up to 20 minutes. Okay, now we want to enter our initial account. So you put your name, username, create a password, hit create account. Name your home assistant installation. I'm just going to name mine home. And you want to enter your location. I'll just hit detect. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. It'll use that for certain settings like sunrise and sunset. It's asking your elevation. So I'll enter that in here. Then set up your unit system and your currency. I'll hit next. You can share data with Home Assistant if you'd like. I like that these are turned off by default and you have to turn them on. So I will choose to leave those off, but you could send data there. I'll hit next. It says devices and services are represented in Home Assistant as integrations. You can set them up now or you can do it later from the configuration screen. So I'll do it later, I'll hit finish. So now we're logged into Home Assistant. And that concludes this video. As I said before, I'll be making more videos, so I'll put a link below to my playlist where you can find those. But that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.